Hello artists! Today I'm going to be walking you through my photography examples for our project called Artistic Angles based on the photographer Jordan Matter. I hope you enjoy. For the next two slides, I wanted to show you the difference between utilizing the camera on your Chromebook versus how I utilize the camera on my iPhone 12 Pro. So these are both my unedited photos for pattern. Pattern is when you're showing something that repeats close up. So as you can see, in my opinion, there's not that big of a difference between using the iPhone camera and using your Chromebook camera. My next slide is my edited photos. This was how I decided that I wanted my image to look. You can see here that there is a little bit of difference in clarity once I edited them versus when they were unedited. But in my opinion, I think using your Chromebook camera will be easier for you in the long run because then you will be able to upload your photos right into Schoology after editing them from your Chromebook. Whereas if you do choose to use an iPhone, an iPod, or any other device you have around the house, you will need to email the photos to yourself and then upload them into your own Google Drive to then be able to edit on the website and upload into Schoology for me to view. This choice is completely up to you as the artist as to what device you'd like to use. In this slide, you can see my photographs of a worm's eye view. A worm's eye view is when you're looking up at an object from below, like a worm. I utilize my daughter's swing set for this. This is my bird's eye view photo. A bird's eye view is when you're looking down at an object from above, like a bird. This doesn't necessarily need to be from an upstairs floor like I did. It could be any view looking on top of something. You'll also start to see that my style with my photography has a quite bright, dramatic, contrasted look. That's just my style, and that does not mean that that is what you need to do when you edit your photograph. This is my indoor portrait where I captured the personality of a living thing inside. This is my puppy Bailey, and Bailey loves to snuggle and curl up in the blankets, so I felt like this photo really represented her personality well. For my outdoor portrait where I captured the personality of a living thing outside, I chose to photograph my dog Zoe watching rabbits run around the lawn. This is something she does pretty frequently, so I felt like it really captured her personality well. For my landscape photo, I showed a space within the world. Usually, this is nature. This is my backyard. As you can see, my edited photo looks a little bit more like a painting and unreal. That was the look I was going for when I did edit my photo. For this photo, I showed a shadow, which is a dark shadow created from light. I decided to edit this in black and white to give it a little bit more of a dramatic effect. I did wait until it was about mid-afternoon, I want to say 2 p.m. for when the sun was nice and bright in order to take this photograph outside of my deck. Something that I've always liked to focus on in my photographs is texture. Texture is when you're showing a smooth, rough, soft, or hard surface. As you can see here, this is more of a rough surface. This is my grandma's hand. My grandma's 95 years old. I've always had a fascination with wrinkles and how the skin changes as we age. To me, it's beautiful and different and odd, and we all know that that's very much my style. Shallow depth of field in photography is when you're showing something within inches of the camera, so that means up really close, and then it might create a blurry background, which is perfectly okay. As you can see here, I took photos within my garden to show the leaf up close and have blurrier vines in the background. For my maximum depth of field, which is when all items are in view and in focus and not up close, I decided I wanted to do something inside since I had already done a wide view outside for my landscape. These are my stepdad's records and I decided to give it an old funky kind of look when I edited it. Motion is when you're showing action or movement in a photograph. For this photo, I put my Chromebook on the edge of the pool, set the timer, backed far away so that I wouldn't get wet, and then jumped out of the pool during the summertime. The camera caught me right in the moment of jumping. Light is when you are showing something that is bright. Here you can see a lamp that I created using my Cricut at home to make a Marvel lamp in our house. For this photograph, I showed an abandoned space. An abandoned space is an old space that is no longer regularly used. It's not always clean, neat, or pretty. Here you can see a barn that we have in our backyard that we don't upkeep very well. And I kind of wanted to give it this old, creepy kind of vibe. So I edited my photo to look just like that. My last photo is architecture, which is where you show a building or structure. 
I kind of wanted to give this one a little bit more of a funky, fun look. So I edited it just like that so that it's bright pink, teals, and purples, which obviously is not the true color of the house, as you can see in my unedited photo. I've just showed you 14 different examples of types of photography concepts. You're going to choose three of those 14 and use your Chromebook or another device of your choosing and capture three final photographs to be edited on Pixlr. Eventually, I will be doing a four month display of photographs at our district office at Canandaigua City Schools and your photograph may be selected to be displayed there for the show. I hope you have fun and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time.